Yikit. 91.6 or Strip 7 WVXU. We are streaming live on RadioArtifact.com. I am your host, Six, and this is the Nom. Now I'm talking about radio show. Now I'm talking about yo. And I got a special guest today. Yeah. Smiling real big. Introduce yourself. I'm Sharice Gibson. I'm smiling at you because look at your, like, the things you did. The I'm Sharice Rickett Gibson. Go ahead. Do it. <laughs> I can't do it. You can do it. <laughs> No, that was that was impressive. I'm Sharice Gibson. So uh-huh. um, I don't know what what do I say? I am at Fox 19. Yeah, and journalist, anchor, host, all that stuff. For the people who don't know who you are, uh, I guess you kind of just told them a little bit. Yeah, kind of give them the rundown. You're Sharice Gibson, Channel 19 News. Yes. How else might they know you? Um, so um, I'm president of Greater Cincinnati Association of Black Journalists. Um, I have been seen all over the city doing a little bit of everything, trying to make connections with people and connect other people to other good people. Um, but mostly just for my show, Cincinnati Connection, I host Cincinnati Connection on Bounce TV and Fox 19. And I also um, co-host The Morning Extra, a uh, show doing really well with my co-host Frank Marzullo and also doing breaking news, international news. Uh, for Young Frank. The morning show. Yeah, Frank. <laughs> I like to watch the show and watch the eyes that y'all make at each other. Yeah. You know, and what's funny is we, we've grown to learn each other very, very well. We, uh-huh. we do well together. And I know kind of what to say to kind of push him to a certain point. Uh-huh. And so he knows what to say to push me to a certain point. So it's almost kind of like playful brother and sister, like who's going to poke a little bit more yeah, yeah, yeah. until we eventually have to toss the weather. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes you should <laughs> That's take That's how it we break it up. <laughs> sometimes you seem like you killed the spirit a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't try to. I don't try to kill a spirit. Not, I, I never try to kill a spirit. We actually have a really good relationship, and we 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 have to. We sit next to each other. Like we sit next to each other in studio and outside of the studio. So we're literally around each other all the time. But I do have those moments where I am exhausted because you know we wake up at two a.m. Yeah. So you have those moments where like tomorrow I'm going to be exhausted because your sleep schedule is all off. Yeah. You're up at two a.m. and Frank comes in every single day. Like excited like that, right. yes. At like four in the morning, he's excited. So, <laughs> and I've said this on air before. I'm like, you know, yeah, there are a few days I just really don't want to talk to you at four in the morning when you're excited, and I can barely like get my eyelash glue on. So <laughs> he looked like he always feeling good and turned up. Yeah, he is, and uh, that's, I can say that he's not faking. That's uh, that's Frank twenty four seven. Uh huh. And I wish that I can say that he he has down moments, but I, in my time working with him, I've never really seen him come to work and not really talk. Uh Usually he has an energy that he brings to the studio and an energy he brings to the newsroom that we can all appreciate at that time of morning. Okay. So so I definitely like y'all chemistry. Um, My mom is a big fan. Thank you. She up every day. My mom wake up yesterday, so she watch y'all every day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, maybe where you came from. Yeah. Where did you, cause you're not, you're not a Cincinnati native, right? No, I'm not. Um, even though some people, there was some rumor that I was from here. I don't know. Someone posted something online that I went to some high school. <laughs> I didn't even know what the high school was. I think it was Hughes or yeah, something. You went, to, <laughs> you went to my high school. You went to camp. I know. I used no, to see it. I'm not, I'm not from here. I'm from New Orleans. I, my nola girl state of mind shirt Uh like born and raised in new orleans uh in the ninth ward i um been there in louisiana girl all my life Mm -hmm. um until i started to get into television and started moving around across the gulf states and you know after hurricane katrina we moved to texas for a little bit but um i mean i was always in the south so this is actually my first time venturing to the midwest Mm -hmm. and i initially was afraid to come here but um uh, I, it took some convincing, but I, I love Cincinnati. I'm glad that I came, but the snow is what kind of turned me off. Really? I've not experienced snow. I don't, I never, oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen snow, but you know, in the South, when we have snow, it's that dusting, like that snow that it sits down for a little bit. And then like two hours later it's gone. Yeah. I've never had snow stay. But <laughs> y'all have a hard time driving in that, right? Yes. We shut it. the city down. Schools <laughs> shut down. Everybody can't go to work. We legit shut the city down. There was no driving in ice, snow, nothing. See, they just started that out here. We used to go to school in any weather. They I heard. just started it, but it's been so so cold. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older, but I can't take it no more. No. 
I don't remember my last three summers, but I remember the last five winters. Now I can. The thing is, and I'm a I'm a December baby, so I love the fall and the winter, mm-hmm. you know, months. Yeah. But I loved it when I was in the South, and it was just you got that chill in the air, and it was cool. Yeah. But you didn't get <laughs> like actual blizzards. There was a I threw a big party. I hadn't thrown a party for myself in years. My birthday was last last year. Mm-hmm. I threw a big party at Revel OTR, and it was like a blizzard came down yeah. the day of my party. And I, I was going to cancel the whole thing. Uh, but we went through with it. And everyone, I was so shocked. Everyone showed up. And we had yeah. a great time. Ain't nobody worry about that snow here? I thought I thought they would not come. I know wow. if we're in Louisiana. If it, like, sprinkles a little bit, we're not coming. Really? No, no. We like nice weather. What, uh, you said Ninth Ward in, in Louisiana? Yes. How does that, how would you say that differs from here? Um... Well, I mean, you know, we have, you know, I don't know if many people know this about New Orleans. We have, like, kind of this ward system. So, yeah. third ward, fourth ward, fifth ward, uptown, downtown, you know, yeah. 17th, Cali, or whatever, you know, all that. Well, um, it doesn't, there's not a ward system here, but I, I guess I would describe it as different neighborhoods. Okay. That's how we classify sort of, like, our neighborhoods and our areas. It's how our city is kind of sectioned off or cordoned off. Uh-huh. Um, so... Uh, I guess the way you would see it here is you guys have like East Price Hill and Walnut Hills and, you know, like, you know, Northside and y'all, these would all be considered different wards um, if they were in New Orleans. So Mm -hmm. East Price is your third ward and Walnut Hills would be your second ward and whatever. Okay. So that's basically what it is. It's basically neighborhoods. Do you, uh, now that you're here, do you like it? Oh, I love it. Love it? Cincinnati's great. What, what I was it? not. Sh- I was shocked. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was cornfields here. <laughs> Everybody think we just cornfields and cows. I hay. know. I know. I mean, uh, that is the perception in the South. We think Ohio. We like y'all like them, but cornfields and farmers and I mean, that's just what you know. Yeah, and I heard. I heard that when you go to the Amish country, that's kind of what it's like, I guess. But I'm not been I'm not been there yet, so this is me, you know, making a presumption. So <laughs> I ain't been there either. I've been there my whole life. I would like to I would like to see Amish com- country for once, but um, but we thought it was like, well, what's in Ohio? Uh-huh. And I tell people all the time, what well, this is what sold me on Ohio. When the station flew me up to do the interview, we went. Uh, they gave me a car to rent, and they kind of really set me up. And so I wanted to, I, I'm a person that likes to drive myself because I want to see what the city's like for myself. I don't mm-hmm. want you to show me the good parts. I want to go around everywhere. Yeah. And I made that from the airport, which I thought was weird. Cincinnati airport was in Kentucky, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> it's still weird to me. Yeah. Why it's is it called strange. CBG? Exactly. No but, um, you make that cut in the hill yeah. and it reveals kind of like that, that, that skyline. Yeah. And it was in the summertime, and it was beautiful weather. And I'm like, oh, my God. Uh I thought it was great. And so I hung out. I had actually a friend who was already living here, and I had no idea that he was here. I've known him since I was 11. Mm -hmm. Um, And Frankie Jupiter, he was a reporter with us. Um, He was living here, and he showed me around. He had me out in OTR the first night, all night. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and that's why I moved to, that's where I live now. That's why I moved to OTR. I had so much fun that I moved there. Uh-huh. Um, well, actually the Pendleton neighborhood, which is like my, one of my favorite neighborhoods. But I mean, he had me out there all night, but it's a lot of energy here that I thought yeah. wouldn't be here. Um, and it's a lot of potential. Um, and I think people are starting to quickly recognize that potential yeah. and take yeah. advantage of it. Yeah. But it's a lot, you guys have a lot to offer here. And I see a lot of potential for, and that's why I guess I do as much as I do, a lot of potential for growth and connections. And it's like, well, you do this. You could be helping this person that does this, and y'all can grow and grow this, you know. So, I mean, I think that there's a lot of potential to make a lot of really good connections. There's only so many degrees of separation I've noticed in Cincinnati. It's just, I don't know if we're just not willing to talk to each other or what, but it's only so many degrees of separation. It's definitely a small a small city where everybody knows each other, especially in, like, the work that you do in entertainment. Oh, yeah. It's even tighter. Yeah, it, it is. And that's why you have to be careful uh-huh. because I always laugh when um, people ask me about certain people or certain situations or, you know, I, I you know, Sharice, you gave Frank a look the other day. And I'm like... <laughs> 
<laughs> I always get Frank a look. It's like I can't. You, I, you know, I have to be careful with what I say because people would think they. I've noticed that people take me serious when I yeah, yeah, yeah. say certain things, uh-huh. and I, I say I am. I'm good for a good eye roll or whatever. Or yeah, whatever. Get on my face, and and that's it. And it's always just jokes. I um, like it. I watch y'all with the, <laughs> with the uh, mute on. Yeah. I only watch y'all actions. It's yeah. Funny. And it's, you know, and that's why I have to be really careful because people think, uh, take a lot of things seriously. And I'm half the time thinking about food. So. For real. Oh, <laughs> man. You just got me. I've, I've eaten at almost every, I'm starting actually a food blog. I've eaten at almost every restaurant in downtown and OTR. I'm working my way through Walnut Hills. I think I've pretty much gone through Walnut Hills. And when something opens, I go to it, like, mm-hmm. the first week. I am a big foodie. That's all I do is eat. You and, gotta, um, and I eat tacos every Tuesday. Your guest on your show uh-huh. was actually the guest on our show last week. I just uh, saw Kellen before I came here. Yeah, Kellen he's good from, people. Uh, where does he work? I forget. At Bakersfield. Bakersfield. Yeah, Bakersfield. he's good people. Yeah, yeah, real cool dude. I've been knowing Kellen since I was probably 15. We were both in a program called Upward Bound here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I like having people like him on. He real cool, genuine, just just a good vibe. Yes. And he's yes. safe because he light skinned. <laughs> so he's not <laughs> threatening. Well, I don't know. Well, I was gonna say something about Drake, but never mind. I don't think he's shown any. I kind of think Drake is like like an evil genius. Yeah, well, I think, I think he's out. an evil musical genius. Um, I do think that he knows more than he's willing to put on. I I really do feel like I feel like he knows he does more. Everything he does to me is very calculated. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether you're paying attention to it or not, it's like it's very calculated from the Facebook posts to the pictures to um, just just certain things he does at the the release. And then I mean, he put an album out and it made us completely forgot that we still haven't seen his son. <laughs> like he still got a son and we don't know what he looks like. And it's like oh, we just forgot that. There's, he was hiding his son from the world or whatever. I don't know. So what. He was hiding the world. Yeah, from he was hiding son. the world from his son. Like that's cold right there. Exactly. And now yeah. everybody's using that line. They hiding the worlds from the kids. Why are you posting a million <laughs> pictures of? Them? Exactly. That's crazy, man. I still am kind of interested. I and I personally think that now that the world does know about the son, which I think the music world knew. Yeah. I think the music world knew, and I think there's a lot of things the music world knows already that they just don't put out there. <laughs> I think he's going to calculate something now that he's on tour to maybe possibly have what is his name? Was it Adonis? Adonis. Is it that, that's what he said? Adonis. Like I think maybe it's, he's might work something out where we might see a peak or something. He got a platform now. Oh yeah. So. He could start in my Instagram page with probably just not even showing his face. They already have fake Instagram pages everywhere. That's so terrible, man. Yeah, People that is. Gain control of their lives. One way that you gain control of your life was by going into the media field, uh, becoming a journalist mm-hmm. for um, people who want to follow in your footsteps, maybe high school, elementary school. What steps would you tell them to start taking to try to like lay, lay the groundwork? Well, I think, you know, I wouldn't say for elementary or high school because it, it, and that at that point, you're still trying to figure yourself out. Yeah. You're just trying to make it day to day. And I remember we didn't even have social media and I was still just trying to make it day to day without losing faith. But I know that in high school, I always knew that I wanted to be something. Mm-hmm. Um, you see a lot around you. And, and unfortunately, with the access that the youth have to social media to the media to their cell phones i mean they're able to see even more than what parents can protect them from too much exactly it's way too much and that's why a lot of people are helicopter parents i encourage it you know be a helicopter parent being a kid's business because we catch people all the time trying to do crazy things to children but um i think i want it to be something and i, I think once you determine that you want to be something and you want to go somewhere with your life it's like that's already laying the foundation mm-hmm. um now you don't necessarily know what you want to do because different experiences can shape how we feel about life or what path we want to take um so for instance for me uh, when i was in high school hurricane katrina happened my senior year so i didn't get to graduate my senior year with all my friends i graduated with these people i didn't know uh, my boyfriend, I thought I had lost him for for like a year, and then he stayed behind for Hurricane Katrina and couldn't find him. Um, and then to find out that they put him in a van and sent him to Arkansas, he had no idea where they were sending them. So, really? um, but I graduated from um, Eastern Hills in. 
Fort Worth, Texas, which is a part of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. I love that. I love Dallas Fort Worth. Uh Um, And I was working with some kind of senior class thing. I was working with kids. Um, and a lot of a lot of them had um, issues that I wanted to figure out, like I guess psychological problems. Yeah, and that made me interested in child psychology. So I thought I was going to school for child psychology. Mm-hmm. I was always a writer. I was always great at reading. Mm-hmm. I was always a great communicator. But I thought that I was going to go to school for child psychology. I got to college and completely sh- it shifted. You know, my mind shifted, and it happens. All the time, my freshman year, and luckily for me, it happened very early before I entered my major. I know, I first of all, I knew that I was not good at science and math. I didn't realize that uh, that was required. I uh-huh. thought we just got to read people's minds, yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Um, but uh, I always wanted to be in the television realm in some sort of form or fashion. I just didn't know what it would be. Yeah. Um, I So once I got into my major... And I really got a taste of what it was like to be in this industry. It's like I kind of went full throttle. Mm -hmm. And you experience that through your first internship. You get inside of that newsroom. And whether it's a newsroom, whether it's if you want to get in film, whether it's being on your first set or being in your first writer's room or being in your first radio station, once you get a taste of what it's like and you fully immerse yourself in that environment, it can completely turn you onto what you are truly wanting to do or meaning to do Mm -hmm. so i really went full throttle literally left broke up my boyfriend i'm like this is not going nowhere (laughs) and i because i wanted to focus i wanted to focus and i was i was so determined i was so focused i came up with a resume reel but i ended up getting uh, a job that was behind the scenes Mm -hmm. um and my my i was going so hard on this one i think i graduated high i graduated college on a friday I started my job in my first station on a Monday. So I've never, I've been kind of moving and moving for years. I have yet to have a month off, two weeks vacation. Mm -hmm. It's always, my vacation's always three or four days at a time. Then I'm ready to get back. So um, that's probably why I'm going crazy. But um, I literally got into that newsroom and I said that I had all of these resources in front of me. I was going to take full advantage of every single thing Mm -hmm. that was around me. Yeah. So... I was, I would work my normal hours. I was part time working my normal. I was making like about eight, nine dollars an hour, and then Boom. I would go into the news meeting, and I would listen to the stories being pitched, and I would figure out what reporter or what photographer I could go along with. Mm-hmm. So what was supposed to be a normal seven, eight hour day would turn easily into a sixteen to seventeen hour day for me. Okay. So super, it was so easy to turn into that, and. And I and I wasn't tired. I wanted to do it, and it was every day. I was living at that station, yeah, because I had a goal that I wanted to reach. They saw passion in me, and so they allowed me to start writing for the morning show uh, as an associate producer. And once I started doing that, that led to a full time producing job at my first eight, my first station, WLOX TV, as a as a morning show producer. In Louisiana? This is in Biloxi, Mississippi. Okay. So about an hour away. You always got to start. You start in a small market, mm-hmm. um, which I'm so grateful for because I see a lot of people, a lot of journalists pushing to get to these bigger markets mm-hmm. as soon as they get out of school. Yeah. But you don't want to mess up in a bigger market because when you mess up in a bigger market, you get fired. Right. And there's oh. more people that saw exactly. you mess up. And they're going to remember that mess yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. People don't remember how terrible you were, how terrible your writing was, or how bad you messed up. In Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh-huh. They market, what, 180-something, 160-something, I don't know. Uh-huh. So, I mean, it's it's a small market, but it's a place you go for growth. So, I mean, from there, literally, it's just me moving nonstop and, you know, without me going too long. It was me working nonstop, having a vision, writing that vision down, and really just kind of pushing forward um, and, and not giving up because I got a lot of no's. A lot of people told me no. Um when I tried to get into this industry, it was Mm -hmm. a lot of no's. And and then eventually you get that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. And once I got that, yes, I snatched it and it's been upward and onward from there. But the no's groom you. Oh yeah. And prepare you for the yes. Yes. So I take rejection very well. Uh, that's, that's, that's the best way to take it. Yeah. Take it, move on, learn from it. As long as you learn it from it, you really don't not getting rejected or losing. You really just learning how to succeed. No, I no longer see rejection as a loss. Um, It's more of a thank you because clearly this was not for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have put myself in a situation where I wouldn't have not 
liked where I was, this kind of, cause you know, people don't realize you, you get to these news stations or radio stations and you're on a contract. Yeah. So you could be under two years of misery, mm-hmm. but that's why I understand. I remember there was a station. I was desperate to get to any station and I went to, oh goodness. It was the first station I hold a copy went to actually. I was in Greenville, Mississippi mm-hmm. and I drove, my family drove me all the way up there and I remember us getting to the city and it looked like, oh my goodness, it, it was like, what, a gas station there? It was nothing in the city. It was oh. nothing there. I would have been miserable if I would have <laughs> taken that job. And the news director offered me a job. I remember the news director because he had a gold tooth. <laughs> but <That's what's> up. <laughs> it was Keep Mississippi. Yeah, it was Mississippi. I mean, what do you expect? But uh, it is what it is. He, um, The news director made a verbal offer. Mm-hmm. And I called up to the station, like, trying to figure out when I'm going to get started, like, what's going on. Mm -hmm. They didn't call back to tell me that something about the budget got slashed, so they had to rescind the offer or something. Like, (laughs) I didn't get the job. This is the guy with the gold tooth is the one who told you Yes. And I'm like, (laughs) They will send him to tell you. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) No, but but honestly, though, um, I'm happy it didn't happen um, because I was, I would have been, I honestly would have been miserable. Mm-hmm. But I moved to when I moved to Biloxi it was the best move. Um, being a producer made me a better writer. I know how to structure shows well and structure yeah. stories well. That led to me being on air. Mm-hmm. I would not have become an anchor if I had not started as a producer at that station. Because they are Brad Kessie, that news director, W L O X, he's with our sister station. He's the one that put me in front of the camera. Uh huh. And he was great. What um if I can just ask you, you can answer briefly. Kind of give us some insight into what it was like to have to pick up your whole life from New Orleans in the middle of Katrina. Like, this is something real. Yeah. But a lot of us don't know how real it was because we weren't in it. Yeah. What is that like to keep, like I say, consistency is a talent all its own. So for you to keep your momentum, graduate high school in a whole different state amongst people you didn't know, what was that experience like? And what what drove you through that? You know, I honestly didn't start to feel... um, much until later in life Mm -hmm. um there were a lot of things about hurricane katrina that i didn't know because remember we're in high school Mm -hmm. and we're in the south and when you're in the south parents don't tell you much right they just want to keep you as normal and happy as possible for me it did not seem real because i always watch the news and when you watch the news you see this happen to other people it you numbs see, you. Yeah. yeah. You see tornadoes hit other towns and you're like, oh man, it's so sad. Yeah. Or you see tsunamis hit countries and you're like, oh, that's terrible. And then you have hurricanes. They always happen in yeah. New Orleans. And then you go to your shelter or whatnot, which that was new for me. I never really went to, gone to a shelter. Mm-hmm. You go to your shelter and, and it still doesn't hit you. And it didn't hit me until we were in a shelter and we had to spend the night there. And I'm like, Maybe I'm spoiled. I'm like, we got to spend a night here. Mm -hmm. Um, There were shared showers with these people you don't know. And you're sleeping next to people you've never seen before in your life. And it wasn't until we saw the levees break um, on television at the shelter that it started to become like, wow, we are not turning around. And wouldn't you think um, right when Hurricane Katrina was hitting, this was the jamboree for my high school um, football team. Mm -hmm. I was more excited about, oh, well, when the storm passes, we can hurry up and go back and have the game because they canceled the game. I was back on the dance team. Um, And that was the only thing I could think of. And then you see the levees break and you're like, oh, my God, like this is we're not going back. Yeah. I don't think I shed any tears until the 10 year anniversary. And that's when I became a reporter. Um, I was I was in New Orleans reporting on the 10 year anniversary and President Obama was there and I didn't have tears because I didn't know the depth of what people went through. So that was my first time as a journalist covering Mm -hmm. Katrina. Yeah. So which is three years ago for the 10 year anniversary. Um, The anniversary just passed like a few days ago. But, But I never covered it as a journalist. So I think I was more moved. Yeah. To hear stories of what people didn't have, what they had to go through, how they were just shipped out or when they got back um, trying to rebuild their homes, which it happened to us trying to rebuild your home and you get like a shisty contractor 
Mm-hmm. And they take you for all you got. And then you got to find another contractor. And then the violence that comes with it and not being able to get your job back or getting getting it back and having your pay slashed. So that's why that's what people mean when, when it comes to those long-term effects of Hurricane Katrina. Nobody's lives, no one came back and life just sort of resumed. Everyone's mm-hmm. life's changed yeah. in some way. Yeah. Like mentally, probably va- like very changed vastly. Yeah. For my, my, especially for my parents, uh-huh. it, it really affected them. So, um, I mean, if there's a storm down there, they're going to fly up here yeah. to would be with me. You want them to just move here. up here? Um, oh, I would never get them to do that. Uh-huh. They are like New Orleans to their heart. They are 504 to their core. Like, there's my dad was in Texas about to lose his mind because it just, he's so Louisiana. He's so New Orleans. Like you can't uh, remember a lot of these people had never left the city. Yeah. Although New Orleans, a lot of people have never left their neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. So you're about to force people who have never left their neighborhoods into a totally different state. He's already been out once. He's, he's, he's good. He don't want to be out again. Yeah. He's not being forced out. You said, uh, you said he, he real, he an N-O, N-O, N-O soul. Oh, Lord. Does he uh, say, why? What's happening? <laughs> what no, no. My dad is Night War Soldier, Desire Project's blood, all the way to his heart. Everyone.